In this tutorial, I'll be walking you through the quick steps of how to view and test MIT App Inventor source code. This video was created for judges who are judging submissions for Technovation. The first part of this video explains how to upload source code to MIT App Inventor. The first step is to download and locate the source code you wish to upload onto your computer. As you can see on the bottom left hand corner of my screen, I have downloaded some source code from a project called Paint Splash. Once you have the code on your computer, you can open up the MIT App Inventor website in a new tab. This can be done by searching MIT App Inventor 2 in the Google search engine. Once you have hit the first link, you will be prompted to sign in to your Gmail account. After signing in, you will be directed to the MIT App Inventor homepage. If you have used the website before, you will see a list of the projects you have already viewed. To upload the source code, click Projects and then Import Project from My Computer. Select the file you would like to upload and click OK. Once the project has been successfully uploaded, it will show up in your list of projects and it will open. Once you have opened the project, you will be taken to the designer screen. Here you can see how the app looks. On the screen, you can interact with the different components. For an example, if you click on this red button, you will see that it is highlighted on the component panel. Another example is when I click on the slider, where you can see it's called Slider 1. Other features, like Camera 1, are called non-visible components because you cannot see them on the screen. Some applications may have multiple screens. In order to switch to different screens, you can hit the screen button and you will see a drop down menu. This application only has one screen. To view the code for this screen, you can hit the blocks button on the upper right hand corner. Here you will see all the code for the screen. If you want to go back, you can hit the designer button. The second part of this video shows how to run and test the source code. There are multiple ways to test out the app to make sure that it works. The first option is to download the AI Companion app. You can do this if you have an Android device and Wi-Fi. The second option is to use the emulator provided by MIT App Inventor. You can use this option if you do not have an Android device. The last option is to connect an Android phone using a USB. You should use this option if you have an Android device but you do not have Wi-Fi. I will go through all three options, but you only need to do one to test the code. Please go to the respective time to see the option which you desire. The recommended option to test your app is to use AI Companion. You can use this option if you have an Android device and you have Wi-Fi. To do this, you will need to open up your Android phone and go to the Google Play Store app. Here, you will search MIT App Inventor Companion. The first app to show up will be MIT App Inventor Companion. You can hit this and then click the green install button to install the app on your phone. Once you have installed the app and opened it up on your phone, this screen will pop up. Make sure that the Wi-Fi on your phone and on the computer is the same, otherwise the app will not work. As you can see, there are two options, connect with code and scan with QR code. Back on your computer, click Connect and AI Companion. You will see a pop-up screen which has a QR code and a six-letter code. Type the six-letter code into your phone where it says six-character code. Then click the orange button, Connect with Code. The other option is to hit the blue button which says Scan QR Code. When you hit this, the camera will pop up on your phone and you can take a picture of the QR code. When you do this, the app will show up on your phone and you will be able to test it out and see how it looks. The second option is to use the emulator if you do not have an Android device. So to use the emulator, click connect and then emulator. The emulator will try to run, but an error will show up. Click need help. 
This link will take you to the MIT App Inventor page. Here it gives you three options. Click option two for the emulator. On the screen, you will see all of the instructions on how to install and run the emulator for App Inventor. The first step is to install the setup software. There is an option for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Since I have a Mac, I chose that option. If you don't have a Mac, make sure to hit the correct link. I will show you the setup instructions for using a Mac, but if you do not have a Mac, just follow the instructions on the website. Here you are given the option of either downloading version 3.0 or 2.3. I downloaded version 3.0 because I have a Mac OS of 10.11. As you can see in the lower left hand corner, this process takes about 3 minutes for the entire setup to be installed. Once it is fully installed, you can click it and it will open up. This process might take some time. Once it opens, you can double tap the MIT App Inventor logo. If you get an error, click OK, and then right click the logo and hit Open. Now hit Open. The setup should pop up. Click Continue on the lower right hand corner. Once you have done this, read through all the terms of agreement. Once you have read through all of the terms, you can click continue on the lower right hand corner. Hit agree. Now make sure not to change the install location and just hit install. you might be prompted to enter in your computer password. Once the entire installation has been completed, you can close out the tab. Once you have closed the tab, you can continue scrolling down on the website we were on before. If something isn't working, click the troubleshooting page. On this page, you can get all the help on how to fix any errors which are arising. In this case, click using the emulator to get some advice. If you don't have any problems, continue scrolling down and click set up the emulator. Now we are on to step two. If you have a Windows or GNU or Linux, you will need to follow step two. However, if you do not have a Windows or a Linux, you can skip step two and continue on to step three. For step three, you will be going back to your MIT App Inventor project. You will click connect and then emulator to open up your emulator. Once you do this, the emulator should show up. If it does not, then click the connection link for connection help. Here you can hit connecting to the emulator and you will get more help on any problems which you might be facing. If you aren't having any problems, then you can skip this step. When the emulator opens up, you will see a gray box which represents an Android phone. You can click the green button to unlock the phone and then the MIT App Inventor app will show up and you can test out your application. The last option is to connect your Android phone to a USB cable if you have an Android device but do not have Wi-Fi. On your computer, click connect and then USB. An arrow will pop up and then click the need help link. This will take you to the 
MIT App Inventor page where you will get instructions on how to use the USB to connect your phone. When you scroll down, you will see that you are given three options. Click option three for instructions on how to use the USB. Here you will get step-by-step -step instructions. Step one asks you to install a software from App Inventor. Depending on the type of computer which you have, click the appropriate link. I clicked Mac OS since I have a Mac. Follow the detailed steps on this website to see how to download the App Inventor installation. If you're having any trouble or issues, click the troubleshooting page. Once there, click using the USB cable. Here you will get help on what to do if you're having any problems. If you aren't having any problems, then just click connect with USB for the next set of instructions. The next step is to download and install the MIT AI2 companion app on your phone using a QR scanner. If you do not already have a QR scanner, go to your Google Play Store and search QR code scanner. You will see multiple different scanners which you can use to scan your QR code. If you do not have access to the Google Play Store, then you can hit either of the links which are shown next to the QR codes so that you can download the app on your phone without the Play Store. Once you have done this, you can move on to step three. Step three is only for people who have a Windows or Linux or GNU computer. If you do not have either of those types of computers, you can move on to step four. Step four helps you set up your device for the USB. On your Android device, you can go to System Settings, Developer Options, and then turn them on so you can be sure that USB bugging is allowed. Then, follow the instructions for step 5 so you can connect your computer and device and authenticate if necessary. Afterwards, move on to step 6 to test the connection. Go to the connection test page to make sure that your connection is working. If you have an error, like this one, then go back to the page and click General Connection Help to get help.